about the most exciting feature releases of this last quarter, which includes the placement change requests list. This allows us to easily filter and sort our placement change requests, and we can quickly and easily navigate directly to the change request itself via a hyperlinked ID from that list. Now, this feature is generally available for all product editions as of our August release. We'll take a look at some updates we've made to the My Activity Dashboard card, which is part of our goals and quotas functionality currently available in our Enterprise Edition of Bullhorn. This now allows us to view a trend view for each of our weekly and monthly tracked reoccurring goals. Also made available from our August release. We'll also take a look at how we can now copy an opportunity. Just like we've previously been able to do with job records, we now have the ability to add a new opportunity to Bullhorn by making a copy of an existing opportunity available in our Enterprise Edition from our August release. We've also made enhancements to the exporting capabilities from within Bullhorn. When you export records from a list view, specifically for the columns, submissions, skills, and categories, in addition to that business sectors, we have separate columns that not only accommodate for the total number of skills and categories, but we have a separate column that highlights the details of those columns. We will also wrap today in viewing our new customer portal, which is now your one-stop resource for user success and also is the home of our new Bullhorn Academy. Let's go ahead and start off today with our placement change request list. Now, in last quarter's product release webinar, we talked about this functionality and as it had just become available in open beta. Now it is generally available for all product editions, and if this is a feature you'd like enabled, please reach out to our Bullhorn support team. Now, change requests. If your company does not currently use change requests, Bullhorn's change request feature allows users to propose edits to an existing placement, especially if you have an approval, a placement approval process, or a change request approval process at your company. These proposed edits could include things like a new bill rate or a pay rate change, start date on the given placement, and these change requests enable your manager or supervisor to view these edits and either approve or reject them. Now, if your edits do not require review or approval, you can simply make your edits directly from the edit tab instead. Bullhorn will track all approved change requests and all placement edits through the Placements History tab. Bullhorn also tracks change requests regardless of their status through the Change Request location. Now, change requests, as we see here, are provided as a tab in each placement itself. The Change Request list allows us to now easily filter and sort our placement change requests in one location. Through the menu slide out under Home, we have Change Request List. Now this change request list, it's read-only, meaning we can still add and adjust columns as needed. Now also, too, within these columns, we can set our filters and sort on given values as well. By taking a look at change request ID, if I wanted to sort this in descending order, this will show me all the most recent change requests down to the very first. Now also too, just like any list, we can rearrange our columns as mentioned. Also too, in looking at the change request list, notice the change request ID column has this blue hyperlink number to it. This takes us right to the change request in that placement. As we take a look at the change requests, for those that will be approving change requests, you can see the proposed adjustments and from the change request form, be able to approve those changes. Now, as you save out a change request, you will be able to see through that particular location, also too, in the placement record. Through that change request tab, you'll notice here in the profile, the green view tells us that that change request has been approved, not to mention the status is also identified for us. Who has made those approvals and when was it approved? 
Again, not only being able to view within the profiles, but the change request list allows us to track that detail because you also have a column provided for the request status. So even after it's approved, you'll still see the history of that submitted proposal. Also, because our list functionality is the same across all entities, filtering or sorting is a great way to see, in this example, which change requests are still pending. If I wanted to filter my current change requests on those that are still submitted, this is a great location for managers who want to see an overview of all change request activity and especially those that are still pending. Now I want us to note that currently you must approve each change request one by one. This list does not allow for mass actions, so you'll still go into the change request, just like I had done earlier, review those proposed changes, and be able to approve or reject from here. Remember, this functionality is available in all product editions, so contact our Bullhorn support team today and request it. We're going to navigate next to the My Activity Dashboard card. Now, if you are on the Enterprise Edition, you may already be familiar with our goals and quotas functionality. If not, contact Bullhorn Support and request this too. Not only does it allow you to add and track your users' performance goals and sales quotas by setting up targets, but it also allows you to track your own goals as well as view trends over time. As we head into the My Dashboard location, the card I'm specifically proposing here is My Activity. And if you don't have the My Activity card currently visible, you can use the Add Card button through the dashboard and under General, locate it here. Once this card is added, you would be able to see your activity reflected here. And from this view, we can tell I currently have two goals for myself. Number of candidates added, which is a weekly goal, and the number of internal submissions added, which is a monthly goal. Now I can see the goal to my actual count, and looking at my numbers here, I have some work to do. Now you can access this new trend view for a specific goal simply by selecting the name of the goal on that main card. And here we can see how we've performed against the goal over the past 12 weeks or months. So you can always track where you are and where we need to be. Heading into the functionality which allows us to copy an opportunity. The ability to copy opportunities is going to be useful when we have a very similar deal and want to eliminate a lot of typing. If I head into an existing opportunity, I'll navigate into Project Manager here. Through the Select and Actions drop-down at the top right-hand side of our screen. We can see in this location the option to make a copy. Now just like previously, we have the options to copy a job. So just like that, when you copy an opportunity, the field data on the existing opportunity is copied over to this new opportunity page. Now we can make any changes here on creating the new opportunity as necessary. All right. If I wasn't identified as the owner of the prior opportunity, I can make myself the owner of this one. In addition to that, what we can do is also identify the status. Now, a few things to note when you copy an opportunity. I want to highlight that making a copy of an opportunity only appears for users who have the add opportunity action entitlement. In addition to that, notice the status as I selected it in the drop-down. The status of the copied opportunity will default to a blank value or if you have a default status for new opportunities that are added into the system. I say this because it does not carry over the status of the original opportunity. So if the original opportunity had been closed, well when we make a copy, the new opportunity isn't going to have a status of closed. It'll either have a default value designated by your company or a blank value so you can choose and track the new status to the new opportunity. In addition to that, the fields that are copied over to the new opportunity include custom fields and custom objects with a type of overview. As you key in the details to this copied and uh, any additional changes for the opportunity, you'll be able to save out. 
When we save, we're brought to the opportunity we had just created. And although things like title and ownership carry over, file attachments, other data-related item like notes and activity, they are not copied over to the new opportunity. So it's still unique. The idea is to save you time in creating new opportunities you may have already had stored within the system. So that allows us to create a new opportunity. Again, very similar to copying a job, located in that select an action on the opportunity for make a copy. Let's take a look at some of the enhancements we've made to the exporting capabilities. Now, in both our August and September releases, we made several updates to our record exporting functionality. Through our menu slide out, I'm going to head into candidates. Now, again, all lists essentially work the same. So although I'm exporting right here from the candidate view, we can also make exports, as we'll also see today in companies, contacts, jobs, Keep in mind the export access is going to be dependent on your user type. Now, firstly, when exporting records into a CSV file from either the job or the candidate list here, provided that the submission column, the category column, and the skills column are displayed, Previously, when we exported these columns, it just gave us a number of the association. How many submissions were tied to this candidate? How many categories? How many skills? Well, with our recent update, now when we export these records, we're going to see some additional detail. As I select a few records to export, let's take a look at what the updates now provide. As I download this document, I'll expand out my columns so you can see here the additional detail. While we still have the counts provided for us, we now have the detail type to it, which includes details of the most recent 10 submissions. It's also going to include, if I scroll a little over further, it's also going to include here the uh, 10 categories and most recent 10 skills as well all associated to the records. These three detail columns displayed in the CSV file are still a part of the count. All right. So you can always now see the details. So it provides us much more information. Now, our second enhancement, pretty similar here. Now, the second enhancement I'm going to refer to came out just a month afterwards. It is the same idea, but specifically for business sectors. Heading into our company's view, I will mention that business sectors used to designate different industries your company does business with, such as automotive, entertainment, healthcare, IT. As such, you may refer to these as industries in Bullhorn, but while these business sector field is available on candidates, jobs, also available on contacts, most commonly you'll use them for company records. So from within my company list view, I'll go ahead, select a few records, take my action to export, and pretty similar to the submissions, categories, and skills we saw on that candidate export, We'll also be able to see detailed columns for business sectors here. Okay, the count and how many. So you always get the detail into that association. You don't have to see the numbers and then guess or navigate back into Bullhorn. Get it all here in the export. Now, as a note, using business sectors is, of course, entirely optional, though some companies prefer not to have business sectors and instead use categories for the same purpose. Unlike categories, however, administrators cannot add new or existing business sectors. Our Bullhorn support team must do that for you. So if you have any changes that you want to make to your business sectors, you can certainly reach out to our Bullhorn support team, and that way you can see them reflected not just in your profile views, but through your export list as well. The next thing we're going to head into, last but certainly not least, in case you missed it, in August, we launched our brand new customer portal. This is essentially going to be your one-stop resource for user success. 
Now, instead of navigating to a number of different sites to find information, everything you need to get up to speed in Bullhorn is in one place found at the top right-hand side of our screen, Get Help. This is going to take us right to the home page for our customer portal, starting off with our training videos. Okay? Now, Bullhorn Academy, this is your only official, official source for Bullhorn application training. Now, on our videos page specifically, we have a range of topics spanning from conducting an advanced candidate search to using our submission list to manage web responses. We can use these filters here up at the top to filter out by role. And we can also, too, filter out by level, broken out by foundations, core concepts, and mastery. Through this location, we have quick videos recorded for your convenience, so you can come back and check them out at any time. They're just a few minutes long. Notice what I have hovered over here our change request list management, a feature we had just discussed moments ago. So you can always come back here for a, re a refresher. What you'll also find, too, is that each video has an accompanying quick reference guide, a QRG, that you can easily print out and hang up at your desk or hand out to your users so that way they have a, a nice tangible copy in front of them. Also in this location, we have staffing webinars. This page, it's going to allow us to sign up for any and all standard Go Live training classes. Now, this is going to be great for both those who may, need, who may need a refresher on a few subjects or for new hires at your company. They can always attend these live sessions. What you'd be able to do if you find a session that sticks out to you, you want them to attend, you can see all available dates for each course and also, too, to view our available time slots. Very similar, make my way to the top, we have CRM webinars. Same idea. These courses are designed, however, for our non-staffing clients. Also in this location, we have private training. This is going to present you with more of an inquiry form. Whether you'd like a class listed from our staffing webinars page to be delivered privately to your company instead of a public webinar format, or maybe you want training on a completely different topic not listed on our site, you've come to the right place here. When you submit your information, a Bullhorn representative will reach out to you shortly to discuss your needs, and that way we can get a class created for you. We also have here product updates. So in addition to our Bullhorn Academy, the new customer portal is also now the homepage for all our monthly product updates. Listed here, we can select the different options up at the top to see the updates by product. Now, if we scroll through this area here, we can even see some of the options we highlighted here just today with exporting. All right, to name a few. Lastly, some of you may remember Bullhorn Brainstorm, which is our forum for client feature requests. We have actually now streamlined this into our new product feedback form located just at the top right of this field, of this location, where we can submit ideas for feature requests or other feedback on the product. You can also find examples of feature requests that have been submitted in the past that we have incorporated into the product on the left-hand side here. Okay? We always love to hear your ideas, so come back here. If you got an idea, get it submitted. Our product team will review these for you. And you just might see them in an upcoming release. With that said, we got a glimpse into some great new features that have been, been made available as of our August and our September releases. We talked about the placement, reach, placement change request list, which is now generally available in all product editions of Bullhorn. 
We got a glimpse into updates that have been made to the My Activity Dashboard card, which now allows you to see trends in your weekly and monthly goals. We got a sense into how we can now copy opportunities, just like how we were previously able to copy jobs. We viewed enhancements to our exporting capabilities. Today we looked at candidates looking at the submissions column, skills, and categories, where we can see not just the number of records associated to that particular candidate, but the details into those numbers as well. On companies, we reviewed business sectors, and through those business sectors be able to see not just the count of business sectors tied to the company, but the detail to them as well. In addition to that, we also reviewed our new customer portal, which is our one-stop resource for user success and our Bullhorn Academy. Don't forget about the recorded videos there, the quick reference guides of which you can print out. Any product requests, submit them into our feedback, and you can also see the latest and greatest updates from within Bullhorn as well. With that said, we're going to go ahead and we will turn it on over to the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Thank you, Terry. That was great. Uh, we had a lot of good questions come in, but please do continue to submit your questions in the right-hand side of the screen. First question was from Chaz asking, can we use placement change requests to record an extension of an original placement? Great question. So with those change requests, that um, is an option that is available regarding those extensions. Uh, again, if you do have to submit a change request, if you have an approval process at your company, then you would want to go ahead and submit that change request with that detail so it can get approved. In addition to that, again, if you do not have the change request or do not need, you can use the Edit tab to make those adjustments on the placement. Awesome, thank you. We have another question asking, for the My Activity card, are there default goals or who determines these goals in my company? Great question. So your system administrator will be able to create those goals for you. Goals can be tied to candidates, jobs, internal submissions, and placements. And you know what, too? Even on note types. Goals you can be set for client visits you need to go on pre-screens, outbound calls, and even appointments type too. Again, your admin can configure those goals. There are standard defaults, just like I mentioned, note types, workflow types, and they can be set on either a weekly or a monthly basis. Great, thank you. We have someone else asking, I don't see the get help button. How do I get to the customer portal? All right, so if you do not see that Get Help button, it could be that you are an account or a support contact. So instead of seeing the Get Help button at the top right-hand side of your screen, you probably see a live chat button, which allows you to chat with our technical support team. Now, fear not, you can visit the portal through either our product updates notification. You might see this little, little message icon here. You can navigate to it through that area. Or also, too, you can save it out as a book, bookmark it by heading into customerportal.bullhorn.com. So a couple ways, using the, the quick navigation from that message icon or save this out, customerportal.bullhorn.com. Thanks, Terry. Uh, we have a question from Stu asking, we upgraded to Enterprise not too long ago. Is there a tutorial on features like opportunities and leads? Great question. So you know what? Through this Bullhorn Academy, this is going to be a great location for you in regards especially to I want to see what's now available to me. Through your Bullhorn Academy, I would take a look at this training videos location because in addition to the things you're currently familiar with, adding companies, adding candidates, you can also see here some updates to adding leads, adding opportunities, and converting those items. Through here, again, you can also expand out through roles, levels, and in addition to that, you also have our resource center through that menu site up for support where we have additional articles on enterprise content.
Great. We have a question from Chrissy asking, I don't have an add card button in my dashboard. Where can I find it? All right, so if you do not see the add card button at the top right hand side of that dashboard view, um, what I would recommend doing is you possibly may need to reach out to our support team so they can get a glimpse into getting that added for you. So we will need that in order to get those cards populated. Great. We have a question from Char Charles asking, if you have a customer with five opportunities for the same position, are you able to make more than one copy at a time, or will you have to make five different copies? So if you're wanting to, in regards to copying the opportunity, what you would do is you would want to create uh, the opportunity, you know, per opportunity, so one-to-one. -one. Great. I think we have time for one more question. Um, this question is from Gina asking, for dashboard data to be correct and properly aligned, does the recruiter need to be the owner on candidates? In other words, if they're not listed as owner, will data appear even though they've completed submission? So if they are documenting the activity, then they should be able to see that activity reflected for their activity. So if they're documenting, they should see it reflected. All right, thank you, Terry, and thank you, everyone, for attending our webinar today. Uh, you will receive an email with the recording, so please look out for that. Have a good day. Thanks, everyone.